Hey guys, welcome to part two of learning D3. In the first video, I just showed you how to uh, how to do basic selections, how we can use D3.select and D3.select all to target DOM elements and do things like change styles and or change the content. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can bind data, very simple data to the DOM. All right, so what I'm going to do is I just have a same list of items here and I'm going to create an array I'm going to call it num array and just put some random numbers in here we'll say 12 uh, 20 33 40 and 55 okay so what I want to do is bind these values to the li tags here alright so we're going to use d3 dot select all and we want to target the LIs so the UL has a class of items and we want the LIs okay just like a jQuery selector um, now what we're going to do is bind the data by using the data method okay we're going to pass in the num array all right and now we can do different things to each piece of data here. So let's change the text. And what we want to do here is provide a function that we can pass the data to. And then we can return whatever we want. Let's return, we'll say um, this is item, we'll say this is an item, item number, and then we'll just concatenate on that D. All right, so if we save that and reload, now you can see that the content has changed and it reflects that particular index of this array. All right, so we're binding this data to these list elements. So this here exactly isn't really useful. You wouldn't really do this for anything that I can think of, but it shows you how it works at its core, how you're binding the data. And there's just a ton of different things you can do. You don't have to just use it to actually display the data uh, in its raw form. Uh, let's take a look at something else. Okay, so let me just comment this out. Oops. And what I'm going to do is, actually I'll just, I'll just go down here. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say select all. And we want uh, dot items li, and we're going to bind the data. All right, and this time I'm going to um, use the style style method, and we're going to grab the font size, and we're going to apply a function. Pass in the data, and what I'm going to do is just return the data, and then we're going to add on pixels. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking the data and we're applying it as a font size. So if we save that and we reload, now you can see that each item here has the font size of whatever that current index is. All right, so this here is going to be the 55 pixels and the top one is 12 pixels. All right, so just another example, you can use it in your styles. So I want to actually grab this back. Actually, I'll just um, uncomment it and comment this. Okay, so what I want to show you now is if I Go ahead and I add to this. Okay, I'm adding more items to the array, and if I reload, it's still only going up to this one here, 55. That's because we only have five list items. All right, so how do we deal with the rest of this data that's not being trant that's not being displayed here? Uh, well, we can use the enter. And exit methods and if we go to the D3 homepage and go down to enter and exit 
It says using D3's enter and exit selections, you can create new nodes for incoming data and remove outgoing nodes that are no longer needed. All right, so this is a good example right here. So let's apply this to what we're doing. All right, so what we'll do is say D3, uh, actually we need to put this in a variable. And we're gonna say D3 dot select and we want to select the body the top level and we're going to say select all list items we're binding the data same thing uh, and then we're going to return this just like we've been doing all right and then after that we're going to take that li and we're going to apply dot enter and dot append okay because we want to append more li's even after the uh, DOM elements run out. All right, so down here we'll just do dot text and we'll do the same thing. I'll just grab that. Okay, we're just outputting the string with the, uh, the data on the end. All right, and then finally we just have to do the exit. So we're gonna say exit dot remove. All right, now if I save that and we go back and reload, now you can see that we have the rest of the data, okay? We have 60 through 90. So no matter how, how many um, numbers we have here, if I go ahead and add a bunch more, save and reload, it's gonna, append, it's gonna keep on appending it as long as there's still data there so that everyone gets displayed or whatever you wanna do with it. All right, so that's simple data binding, and obviously you don't have to just use an array. We could just, if we wanted to, to save var name and set that to John Doe, and then we could go down here and say d3 dot uh, select, and let's actually just add a paragraph up here. Actually, we'll do it at the top. And we'll say my name is, and then we'll put in a span, and we'll give it a class of name. Okay, nothing, nothing in it, just the span. And then down here, we'll say that we want to select uh, dot name, so anything with the class of name, and then we're going to say dot text and we'll pass in, uh, what are we gonna pass in, name. All right, so if I reload, we get my name is John Doe. Okay, so you can, you can bind any kind of data to any kind of element. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. I know this here, again, isn't something that you would do, but it's just to show you how it works. In the next video, we're gonna create a very basic chart using D3.